a number of albums, I'll tell you about them again. Um, the first one I put out was called Infinity Right Now, which I actually re-released because I, I made the initial recording on my kitchen table, literally, two years ago, and I didn't know anything about what I was doing. I was using, like, the microphone that came with my laptop. Um, <laughs> So since then, I have learned a lot more. I've read all the production, have like the audio and the the, the DVs and all that. Mm -hmm. So so I know that works. So I released it. This is new. This is fresh. This is hot. Um, my second album is called Sidekick and Other Songs. It has a terrible cover. So as soon as we get off this cruise, I'm going to hold a contest to make a better one. Then I also did Hello the Future gets her Phil Con at Phil Con. That one has me on the inside. But also, you probably should be aware of this lovely thing. Who made this thing? <laughs> Anyone here familiar with the band They Might Be Shines? No. <laughs> I've heard they're on this boat somewhere, but I've never seen it. Um, so They Might Be Shines released this album called Mink Car on the morning of September 11, 2001. That was sad. Uh, ten years later, a group of us, including including um, Nims Two Front a lot, including Molly Lewis, including Marion Call, including the Double Clicks, including Ooh. myself, and a bunch of people whose names you will know. Storm is actually hidden on Nims Two Front the track. That's cool. So we covered Mink Car to benefit the FDNY Foundation, which is the official foundation for the Fire Department of New York. We have so far raised about six thousand dollars. We made them a donation earlier. We're going to make them another donation in a couple of months. So you can also find out about this by going to Hello the Future, or you can just type Mink car cover into the Googles, or if you come and see me, we can do some kind of charity thing. But I only think I got like two, two in my bag. I just wanted to show them to you. So, so I've done all of those albums. I've done a couple, uh, been part of a couple other things. You can find me on the internet. But my next project for 2012 <coughs> is called Giant Robot Album. The cover is already done. Jay Gordon has finished it. Now all I have to do is come with music. The title <laughs> song for Giant Robot, um, Giant Robot Album is, is actually called Giant Robot Song. Coincidentally, it is based on a true story. Back in summer camp, on the first day, they sat us in the picnic yard, and they told us the fine arts camp was very hard, and that all of us would have to practice very hard. And they told us if we wanted good work someday, we couldn't play our pop music or our anime because those things weren't important in the real world. You know, the fine arts camp is all about the real world. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. They took this one kid's drawing of a giant robot. And they told him to stop wasting his time, get in line, focus on perspective. And we practiced hard, and yet we met in secret to perform the Final Fantasy Opera. <laughs> they say we were wasting our time. <laughs> then, in undergrad, in our classes, they told us what was good and bad. It was good if it had meaning, it was serious, and nothing good it produced that wasn't serious. And they told us every time we did a smaller play, there should be some deeper meaning as a takeaway, so the audience would get up and go stop the war, or decide that social justice was finally worth fighting for. And I'll never forget how the way they denigrated anything reflecting pop culture. How they told us we were wasting our time. We should get in line and focus on perspective. But what they didn't seem to get was to make meaning first, you have to go and make a connection. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting your time. And I'm not even going to make the old argument about Mozart being part of pop culture, or Dickens being part of pop culture, or Shakespeare being part of pop culture, and how it all kind of changed with the frickin' Rite of Spring and the subsequent decision that art was a very, 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 very serious thing. And it wasn't for everyone. It was cultural broccoli. You know, I, I actually really like broccoli. <laughs> Then in graduate school, when I said in class the internet had changed the rules, that the new artistic culture was the internet, and the people who made art should use the internet. With Web 2.0, I took the job the theater started all those years ago and gave us ways to make connections with the audience. There were so many ways for us to reach an audience. And I'll never forget, they told me serious performers didn't use the internet. And they told me just stop wasting class time, get online, focus on perspective. And my assignment for next class was to restate a restoration play in 1960. And I knew that I was wasting. I should have been making things from the start. We didn't have to stop drawing those giant robots. We should be using all our time to connect the lines and focus on creation. And sure, not all of it will be hard. But what's important is that you make the connection. Otherwise, we'll just be wasting your time. So here's to the kid who got his giant robot drawing torn up on the first day of fine arts camp.